Khalil Mack continues to hold out with one year left on his $13.8 million contract, but the Raiders reportedly still have not put the pass-rushing monster on the trade block. No matter. The Raiders have taken calls from several interested teams and reportedly have heard several offers. I don't know if the Bears are one of those teams, but they were on several lists of trade partners because they have the salary cap room to accommodate Max demand for a contract extension paying him $20 million a year. No compatible source was found for this media. The Bears also certainly have a pass rushing need, and that was true even before outside linebacker Leonard Floyd broke a hand. Mack delivered 10 and a half sacks last year and has played every game the last four seasons. He is good and he's healthy, two boxes the Bears regularly have trouble checking. A trade instantly would make Mack the Bears' best defensive player. Heck, a trade would make Mack their best player, period, and do it at a game-changing position, not at something like guard, which, while I love Kyle Long, is an embarrassing indictment of player evaluation and development. After three years of last place finishes, Bears titular GM Ryan Pace could use a best player who helps produce a playoff season, and so, the two big issues are how badly he would get pantsed in trading for Mac and how soon he would be able to void Mac's guaranteed money. Read more for all the focus on passing in the Bears' new scheme. The running attack should be strong, led by Jordan Howard Stevie Sunshine's power rankings 1. Luscious. Unbeaten, untied, undisputed. 2. Hashtag Urban Lear. Leader in the clubhouse for hashtag of the year. 3. Michael Kopek. I should copyright the event formerly known as Michael Kopek. 4. Carlos Rodden. Has a 1.75 ERA in his last eight outings, all quality starts since the start of July. I know we're all caught up in Cope Japalooza, but this White Sox starter has done it for two months, not two innings. 5. Aloy Jimenez. Love that big talk from the Sox's big prospect in a Players' Tribune piece in which he declares he's beyond ready for the majors. I want to hit bombs. Lots and lots of bombs. Hey, kid hit more bombs than James Shields gives up, and it's a deal.6. Cull Hamels. Mr. Peabody and Sherman went into the Wayback Machine, and voila, the Cubs got the 2008 version of the guy who was named World Series MVP.7. A gravy waterfall. You heard me. A gravy waterfall. It was part of a buffet meal with biscuits on the side for drowning in the cascading goodness. Sounds like a topic for the I'm Fat podcast and a likely offering at their eventual gathering that has to be called FatFest.8. Bogle Vineyard's 2015 Essential Red. It's described as rich, ripe, luscious and juicy, and it tasted like all of that. I guess I'm just naturally attracted to anything luscious.9. Chris Davis. The A's hitter got his jersey autographed by Make-A-Wish child Anthony Slocum then wore the jersey to the plate and hammered a 438-foot homer. What sounds like a corny movie scene is instead a great slice of reality.10. Getting to the Kennedy Express lanes just as they open. This must be what a prison break feels like. You know when women will be treated with respect at Ohio State University? When they can win national championships. That's when. The preseason Alabama Press College football poll is out. The Sox traded Luis Avalon. We'll always have cope at day. If Corey Crawford can't sound confident that he'll be ready to make a difference, then how can Blackhawks 